And marker. So here we are, you know, day four of our our shooter alpha bomber shoot. It's been a lot of no sleeping. Yes, the sun will be coming up. Our epic weekend. This is we have we have shot an epic movie in the past four days. I like that one. That's a keeper. I knew Joseph was like a video music video maker and he'd done stuff for bands like Shelter and um, you know Strike and Distance and Friends of Ours and a few others. And so I said, you know, one day I just came out of the blue and I said, Joseph, you know, why don't we work together? You know, we play kind of a dark style music that uh, you might be into. Joseph initially came came up with the concept of kind of making these um, cinematic vignettes that that we could um, that we could play intermixed with with band live footage. All I saw was 50s imagery. I saw cars racing. I saw all the cool parts of a 50s movie, all in the song. Whenever I would listen to it and close my eyes, so I went back to Daryl and Angel with this idea. You know, hey, let's shoot all the cool parts of a 50s movie without the movie. We'll create a real thin storyline and just shoot everything that would be amazing to shoot. Uh, Angel and Daryl and, uh, and Joseph got together and um, got back to me a couple weeks later and they said here it is. It was just this one page outline of um, everything that was gonna go that was gonna go down in the video and I just looked at it and I was like this is brilliant. We, I can't wait to shoot this. It's basically the same thing you've seen in any other 50s movie. You know, there's a classic love triangle. There's, you know, two gangs. Everyone wants the girl. And, but ours was a little bit different. We had a twist. We wanted ours to be going on in this alternate universe where all the gangs, everyone is in skeleton face paint. As we started developing the concepts, um, I mean, initially I was very excited to be able to shoot some of the things which you kind of always want to shoot in your career. Um, it's sometimes, you know, you may never get the opportunity to shoot these things, especially things that are so dear, um, you know, to your memory of childhood and, and, and things you've, you've grown up with. The, the whole pre-production was what made the production so great and so much fun. Proper scheduling does work, storyboards is very important. We had like a six week pre-production process to where um, we could really just go over like every second of the song and really just hash everything out. We put everything into a timeline. We created a blueprint of what the video was gonna look like with storyboards. We edited them, we dropped them in against the song and every, everything everything fit like a glove. Everything fit exactly how it was supposed to fit. Um, so we did, we did plan um, probably 95, um, 90 95 percent of, of the music video beforehand um, and that that's really kind of a very good way to work with such a um, such a robust project Daryl and Joseph did um, a lot of the storyboards and they planned out exactly you know the connect, the chemistry the connection that has to be done between a director and the cinematographer we can go this wide I was thinking um, maybe just pick up the sticks yeah, so pre-production was about um, was about six weeks, and through that we just hashed everything out, um, built props, built a stage that um, Joseph had this really good concept for for a stage that actually really um, allowed myself as a cinematographer to like justify um, this really kind of dynamic lighting scheme, which is this really kind of ghouly, you know, flashlight under the chin um, lighting scenario. And Camera speed, mark up, and set, action. Um, the stage, an in, in, in example of like, we knew exactly what Joseph wanted, and so we went out and actually designed it. We built it, we got the glass for it, we did the electrical for it. Um, <clears throat> it was a little complicated because for every single square you see there, there's a 500 watt uh, done some light and it's you know, when you're dealing with that much water you also have to have you know the right you know gauges of wire the, the right sockets for the lights you know having the to know what diffuser to use you know which it, you know that's what the director of photography to decide what he wants to have there because you want this angle on him right so we have to yeah i want a little angle but yeah so dolly back dolly back 
that allowed us um, and myself to really kind of justify some of the lighting sources. There's a lot of practical lighting sources um, in the music video. And the biggest, of course, is, is the stage. Hi, my name is Jesse Tuart, and I'm on the set of the Alphabet Bombers video. A lot of people thought that this was going to be a little TV thing. Come November 22nd, the first day of shooting, I think it was, um, we showed up on set and had no idea the magnitude of what we were stepping into. I mean, we're talking wardrobe, we're talking makeup, we're talking catering, crew, lights, expensive looking cameras, um, and everything in between, sets. I mean, everything was just so overbearing and overwhelming, we couldn't believe it. And uh, from that moment on, we were just hyped for like four days straight. I was very pleased when I first saw the footage in the Telestani Suite. It was right on. It was exactly what we wanted. It looked like it looked like a movie from the '50s. Really, I mean, the great thing about it is, um, you know, as a cinematographer, you know, you look for projects that really allow you to. Uh, to kind of do things that you love and, and a lot of like, you know, 50 sci-fi and, you know, Twilight Zone things um, gave us a, a, a lot of uh, artistic license to kind of go crazy with some of the lighting. So, and a lot of kind of period-esque lighting. So a lot of lighting research was actually done as well um, to replicate some of the things that um, they've done in the past. I had been pen pals with this guy from I had met from horror movie conventions who was in four Ed Wood movies. He was in Plan 9, Bride of the Monster, several of them. And his name is Conrad Brooks. I wrote him and said, hey, you know, I think this is something you might be interested in. I'm doing this 50s B movie and it's pretty much right up your alley. You know, would you be interested in making a cameo in this? It would I would love it so much. It would really make this complete. Is that a camera? Who's the man behind the camera? Mr. Hollywood? Of course, Conrad Brooks. Joseph had Pretty said close. I got the perfect role for him. Um, you know, he had done it in, uh, in Tim Burton's film, Ed Wood, so he could probably pull it off for us with no problem. And he did it, I picked him up, he did a cameo, he played the bartender, and it was, it was really special. <laughs> My buddy. The band's great, huh? Everyone in the Alphabet Bomber sweats horror films. So having you know a guy like Conrad Brooks, who's well known throughout the, the entire genre, you know all the way back through a half a century, was um, it was a treat. And actually seeing him in the flesh Friday morning when we all showed up for the set was um, um, a memorable experience to say the least. Faces, Wolfman's here. Mummies are here. Monsters are here. Everybody's here. What a show. <laughs> You know, rarely in my, my young career as a filmmaker um, do you really get a chance to work with, with people that, uh, that really kind of you, you've known via their, via their films, not via personally. Um, to have Conrad Brooks on a set, um, as kind of surreal as the set was in general, and to have um, such a giving and um, energetic person um, ready to shoot and ready to move equipment. <laughs> Even, even, even after a, a, what was probably a 20-hour day, um, was very amazing. My first day on this shoot. I'm all excited. The graveyard scene was definitely my favorite part of shooting. I probably knew that deep down, and that's probably why I'd wanted to do it on the final day. We're here in a graveyard in Old Town Alexandria, and no one questions this, and they just all kind of accept it and go along with this crazy idea, you know, of skeleton gangs. The graveyard sequence was, I think I'd have to say, my favorite thing. We're on the set of a cemetery scene where skeletons come from the dark, you know. If you can imagine, we were just in a caravan of cars driving down George Washington Parkway, pitch black, in the, in the dead of fall, all the dead trees just swarming over the cars like you're, they're gonna swallow you. We're all in skeleton makeup and we're checking each, each other out in the, in the rear view mirror as we're, we know we're going to a graveyard shoot, but we have, have no idea what, we're, what we should expect. 
because of the because of the scenario we kind of wrapped around the 50s theme was this kind of like Halloweenish, ghoulish type of thing. So um, the rumble actually takes place in the uh, in a graveyard, and um, that was just a huge canvas for us to play in. But I mean, this is a real place of people's rest. It's just a a crazy bone chilling. Um, just kind of a, a moment where you just say, I never expected myself to be in this situation, but goddamn, I'm glad I'm here. Creating solutions. Who, who created the problem? Nature. I'm not gonna disclose how much this video costs. We did it for much less. Why? Because we're creative people. We think things through. We don't just pay off people to get certain things done. That's why it costs less. Way less. Much less than that. This was an independent project. Squint more. Open your eyes big. I really hadn't had a lot of experience in working with actors and that's because this was an entirely different animal from any type of music video project that I've worked on before. You know, the actors were great. They were all professionals and it came together, I think, really well. And it was a lot of fun to do. What are you going to do for me that you haven't done in the past five years already? Was it difficult as a producer? Yes, I would say so. But you know what? If, if it wasn't challenging, what would I produce? You know, it's, it's a strong feeling being immortalized on film, especially this beautiful, artistic, black and white, soft, glowing film. And I, can, I can say and I can quote both Joseph, Daryl, and Larry and myself that there's nothing else that we'd rather be doing. Why go out and get fucked up on hard substances all weekend when you can make a movie and feel just as messed up? Rolling on this one. Pictures up. A lot of this was real flattering. As a lot more people came on board and started getting involved with this project, everyone loved the idea so much. Everyone really took a lot of ownership of this video, which was really nice and unexpected. I have no doubt on us whatsoever. Especially with our crew, so many people like to become loyal to what we're doing now. So, like, it's a, it's an amazing experience. A lot of people that um, I actually crewed with, that, you know, the first time ever on the shoot, they're just, you know, instant kind of friends. You know, we all just kind of were there, were there to, to make to make a movie and make a make a music video to go along with it. You know, like I gotta be sure that we have the crew. Gotta be sure everything's getting done, the construction, the lighting, all that stuff. You know. That Joseph made it difficult. It won't be Joseph if it wasn't. 